Well, good morning, folks. I thought I would do another update for you in regards to the roadblocks, the riots, the strike, and so forth, and the impact it is having uh, on us here in Monta. All the, the majority of the strikes and the roadblocks are in, up in the other regions of the country where near the Andes and where most of the indigenous people live. As a matter of fact, it's the indigenous indigenous-led people that are uh, conducting the strikes and there's constant negotiation going on with the government. I don't know that there's any progress being made. From what I read in the papers, it doesn't look like much progress is being made. I'm going to put a link in the description to the two of the different newspapers that I keep tabs on to get my information from in regards to uh, the ongoing problem. Uh, there are the last report that I got, there were like 250 people have been injured so far, and there's been one death. The death was supposedly was, you hear different stories from everywhere, the, the supposedly a guy, well, hearsay says that he had a heart attack and the, the protesters wouldn't let the ambulance through, so he died on the spot. But then if you ask the indigenous people, the people that are doing the, that are conducting the roadblocks and doing the strike, uh, they say that he died of sclerosis of the liver. <laughs> I don't know how they diagnose that, but apparently that's what they think. Anyway, so it's all hearsay. It's all hearsay. We don't know what the truth is. And before you haters get in my comment section and accuse me of being racist, like it's already happened, accuse me of being racist because I mentioned the indigenous people. It's, I'm telling you, facts are facts. The, these strikes are conducted by the indigenous people. They've been doing this for years. This is not the first time they do this couple times a year and this too will pass they'll they'll work out some negotiation with the government and get some concessions made uh, but if you depending on who you listen to you know this country's going to go to hell in a handbasket soon so i don't know what to tell you if you're planning a trip to here and you're planning to arrive this week or maybe even next week you might want to really think hard about it you may end up being stuck uh if you, if you come into Quito, according to the report, see, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get stranded in Quito for a while. If you fly into Guayaquil, from, like from Miami, and you say you're going to, to the coast, Salinas or Monta, you got a pretty good chance that you'll, you'll make it through. There's been some small demonstrations reported in, around those areas, but no major roadblocks. Around Cuica and Quito, all the major highways in and, in and out of those cities, they're destroying the roads. They're knocking trees down, pushing boulders down, doing everything they can to block the highway. I went to Mega Maxi this morning to see what the status was on meats and produce and eggs and bread. And you can see here from the videos that they've got most of the sections closed off. Now, because they have nothing, there's no hardly any meat at all, no chicken, uh, there's probably there's probably some frozen meat in the front. I didn't look in the frozen food section. As you can see from the videos, there's there's no bread. There's hardly any produce at all. There's no bananas. I noticed this morning they did have some tomatoes. Yesterday they didn't have any tomatoes at all. So everything depends on you know where their source is. I found bananas. Uh, from a street vendor uh, on the way home yesterday. I got three really nice bananas for 25 cents and I got a really really nice papaya For a dollar fifty which I hear is the going going rate nice big one big papaya ripe ready to eat and But if you look at the from the videos here, you notice that there's lots of beer and wine <laughs> There's no shortage of beer and wine. I can imagine though that at some point That the strikes will affect that as well they might as well just go home. But anyway, let's just keep our fingers crossed. We can always hope. I like that expression, this too shall pass. It's, this has happened before. It's happened several times. According to my local sources that I have around here that have been here all their life, they say this happens a lot. It'll, it'll pass. Okay? So for those of you flying in, I always like to say expect the worst but hope for the best. Okay? Good luck to you. And thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.